Hi, this is video uh, two. Um, then it start. We'll pick up where I left off on Jerusalem. It says uh, half the people will go into captivity, or half of Jerusalem. Um, what's going to happen? And it's already the scenario is already being set up. Just the other day, um, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope, called for a one world banking system they are also calling trying to take parts of Jerusalem now and calling them Christian holy sites instead of Jewish holy sites um, I forget exactly which ones it is I think it's the um, well let me not even guess but they said they want to go in there and call some of these sites Christian holy sites well what this will do is it will set up a scenario once that is done that the Jews and the Arabs since they cannot never agree will probably then be able to agree on a peace treaty saying that these holy sites will neither be Arab nor Jewish but will be Christian holy sites this will entice them to go ahead and sign the seven-year peace agreement this is all setting up right before our eyes and if you can't see that what's going on because a lot of people can't see because they're spiritually blind and don't want to see a lot of people can't see because they have no idea what's going on but there's a select few who can see into the depth of what's happening and what is actually taking place um, Israel will be invaded, but they will not be taken ever again. The Bible says they'll never be taken again. This will never happen. Now, they will be uh, invaded, and, and a lot of people will be killed, and, and Israel will almost be taken. But then we're going to find out what's going to happen. It says, Then shall the Lord go forth, well, let's see, and, be, and take that, the people go forth into captivity, and not be cut off from the city. And the residue of the people should not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So as these nations begin to invade Israel, at some time, I believe, after the peace treaty is signed, and the Antichrist himself will break the peace treaty, in uh, three and a half years after it's signed and he will go in and then the Lord God will rise to fight against these nations and his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain, for the valley of the mountain shall reach into Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzariah king of Judah and the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee and it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord not day nor night but it shall come to pass that in evening time it shall be light so there's going to be a great war and the power and the light of the Lord himself coming to fight on earth will cause even in the evening when it's dark to be light. Um, it, it's going to be a miraculous thing and it's going to be a powerful thing. And, and many, 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 many millions of people will die in this war. Now, let us skip down here to chapter 12. It says, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. 
Their, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall come away, consume away in their mouth. Now, as far as our understanding goes, the only thing that it causes would be nuclear warfare for your tongue and eyes and um, your flesh to consume away while you're still standing on your feet would be just instant, uh, like a nuclear flash, poof, and then and, and it just consumes away. Now, that could be a scenario. Then again, it could be God Almighty with, with with His power and weapons. Whatever He fights battle with, could possibly be the thing that destroys these people. I, I'm not sure. And it says, "It shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one his hand on his neighbor, and his hand shall rise against the hand of his neighbor." This will be a great panic. People will kill each other. They'll be killing their neighbor. I believe armies will turn on each other as they did in the Bible, in times in the Bible when it caused the, them to turn on their selves and kill themselves. Be a great uprising of, of people against people. Well, you know, that's actually going on now. You know, the people turning against their governments and people, their own people fighting against each other, killing. Five million have been, uh, 5,000 have been killed in Syria as, as of today. And Judah shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. In other words, there's going to, after this war, all the wealth that these countries own is going to be gathered together. The gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, and of the camel, and of the donkey, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as the plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. The Lord God, Jesus, will come and he will set up his reign on earth. And all the nations of the world will come and bring their um, gifts unto him. Now that I've told you a little bit, just a scenario of what's going to happen, uh, it's, I want to get down to the part about accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that we all have probably accepted the Lord at some time in our life. Most of us, uh, a lot of us haven't. But if we have, I want to ask you a question. Are, are you 100% dedicated to God? Are you putting him first in your life? Is he what gets you up in the morning and gives you joy and happiness and peace? Do you base your life on him or do you base your life on your job or on your home or on your husband or wife or your children? I know it's easy to get carried away. For many years I did. Got carried away with other things. But in the hour we live in today, I'm asking you to please search your life. Talk to God and ask him to renew your love, to renew your peace, to renew your joy. Find you a good church home if you don't have one. Go. Don't go to be seen, but go to worship. Go to the altars and pray. Pray for the hungry, the millions that are starving each day. Pray for the needy. Pray for Jerusalem and for Israel. Pray for our nation, America, that has fallen into immorality so badly. And I will be back with one last message on the next video. Thank you.